<laughs> Praise the Lord. Let you knock our head here, a.k.a. Brother Billy Jr., Brother and Sister. We turn our Bibles to Hebrews chapter 4, and we'll be looking at verse 16, and it reads, Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, to the hearing, to the admission, to the application, to the distribution of this great word, taken from the greatest book that man could ever possess. And my brothers, this is God's word. And we give God all the honor, all the glory, all the praise in the precious name of the Son, our Lord, Jesus Christ. Jesus. Praise the Lord, amen, brothers and sisters. The Hebrew writer gives an exhortation. He gives a, a encouragement. He gives an edification. He gives an enlightening. He gives an empowering, equipping truth to the readers that they could come boldly to the throne of grace and obtain mercy and find grace in the time of need. And this grace that the Hebrew writer is speaking about is God's overwhelming, outrageous desire to do good for them. It's God's undeserved, unmerited, unearned favor that he wants to pour to those who come to him. And mercy that's going to be obtained is the withholding any bad that they des that they deserve. So God wants to give them grace. That's the goodness that they don't deserve. And then he wants to have them obtain mercy, which is the bad withholding the bad that they do deserve. And then they're going to have grace. That's that goodness that they don't deserve for the time of need. You know, <laughs> I remember when I was back in this cult called the Church of Christ. And I remember somebody spoke along those lines of Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16. And um, spoke about how when you come boldly, you you got to make sure that you, 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 you clean up, you repent of your sins. And, and, and when you, then you could come boldly because then you know you're right with God and then he could do. You know, brothers and sisters, it's a shame when somebody could make you feel so uncomfortable and so rejecting of yourself that you would have to pretend to be somebody that you're not to feel valued to God because God loves us. And, and, and this love that God has for us is, is where, where he wants us again to shower us with this goodness grace and this mercy and he is so much wants to help us along where again where we could come boldly and that boldly speaks about where we could come free where we can come freely when we come to the revelation uh, and the insight and the ideas and the concept of how much god loves us how much god has forgiven us of all our sins and how much god wants us to have eternal life and spend that time that he will never leave us nor forsake us. And when, when, when you come to this realization that we could come boldly. And that boldly comes when, when we understand and know how much God loves us. And, 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 and wants to have such a deep, personal, intimate relationship with us. When we know that, then we can face any kind of circumstances that come against us. You know... There were two great men of God that's recorded in, in the book of Acts, the, the Apostle John and the Apostle Peter, where in Acts chapter 3, they did this miracle where they healed a man that was crippled some, since birth. And, and, and when they did that, they started preaching the gospel and, and people started getting saved, started just believing on the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And they were saved. These miracles that a man that was that was crippled. Because now could walk, they healed him, and and by the power of God, and then they started preaching the gospel, and people were getting said like in the, for the, the thousands, two thousands, five thousands, the people were getting saved, and then the religious leaders happened along that, and then they arrested uh, these uh, these uh, gospel preachers, the apostle Peter and the apostle John, and if we pick up something that happened during that time. In Acts chapter 4, when the religious leaders arrested the Apostle Peter and the Apostle John for preaching the gospel of grace and healing a man that was crippled, 
That was why they were arrested. They, these religious leaders interrogated them. And in Acts chapter 4, they interrogated um, Peter and John and said, what authority do you do this? Speaking all this and all that. And Peter went on to say that, you know, neither is there salvation in any other no other name under heaven given among men by which we may be saved. And that's the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And when Peter had said this, let's take a look at verse 13 of Acts chapter 4. He says, now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, the boldness, this this is the, the boldness. They saw it, these, these religious leaders. They saw the boldness. They, they saw how... The, the, that that Peter and John were, were they 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 knew they had a revelation they could see it they they perceived that boldness that was that was come from the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit again guiding them all truth teaching them all things bringing these things to remembrance to Peter and John how much God loves them how much God is is has given them and sent how God is just pouring all that goodness on to Peter and John. And watch this in Acts chapter 4, verse 13. And perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant. They marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. So, <laughs> I, I, I remember also in that same cult of the Church of Christ, I remember one time um, uh, 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 a leader came up to me and said, uh, "Brother Eberly, um, you know, uh, I don't know how to say this. Now, I hope you don't take this personal, but we're we're going to have to remove you from from preaching duties. Um, you see, um, you know, when you get up, you know, we can barely understand you. I mean, you know, I talk to you about, you know, you, you preach too much about grace and." And, you know, and, and, you know, when, when you talk, you, you know, you stammer, you stutter and, and, you know, you know, people have been telling that, that they don't understand what you're talking about. So now, now don't get me wrong. This, this is not personal, but we, we're just moving you from it. Just take some of our, our preaching classes and, you know, then maybe that could help you with that speech problem that you have. <laughs> so anyway, the, the. The, the 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 religious leaders who you know they marveled and they said uh, that they were unlearned and ignorant and 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 they marveled that they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. So something about that they took knowledge that Jesus had been with them. And when you have been with Jesus, when when you when you've been downpoured with the Holy Spirit with everything, where the Holy Spirit is testifying of Jesus Christ. You will exhibit boldness. We could, you, you could now be all that God has called you to, who all that that Jesus Christ has called you to do. And so, they 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 um, had a conference amongst us. I said, "Oh, well, what we're we gonna do?" And I mean, they they, they healed this man, you know, that that, that was crippled, and, and people are, are are listening. What, what we're gonna do? I said, you know, you know what? We'll we'll, we'll threaten them. We'll, we'll, threaten them with their lives and tell them don't don't preach uh, Jesus no more or you're going to really get it and then they'll get the picture so you know we'll do that and so they they did that they they threatened them and say don't preach pre uh, you know don't preach this gospel don't preach the, the Jesus no more don't use his name no more or we're going to really go after you and, and so all right and so then they left and then you know uh, apostle John and apostle Peter then met up with the um the other believers and told them of what happened. And then let's pick up what the the, the, the believers after they heard this news that um, John Peter shared with them in Acts chapter four, verse twenty nine. And it says, "And now, Lord, behold their threatenings, and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness, all boldness." 
Therefore, come boldly to the throne of grace and obtain mercy and find grace in the time of need. That boldness, when you come to a greater revelation and insight and ideas and concept of the things of Jesus Christ, who you are in Christ Jesus, what you have in Christ Jesus. And so the, the, the believers were asking for, for, for boldness. That's what comes with boldness, a greater awareness, a greater anointing, a greater uh, revelation of who you are in Christ Jesus and what you have in Christ Jesus. And so they said, and now, Lord, behold their threatenings and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy words. And then watch this. By stretching forth thy hands to heal and the signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child Jesus. And watch this, verse 31. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together and they were filled with the Holy Ghost and they spat the word of God with boldness. They broke it freely. They spoke it liberally. They spoke it knowing this great revelation of who they are in Christ Jesus and what they have in Christ Jesus, the word of God. That's why we could come boldly to the throne of grace and obtain mercy and find grace in any time need. No matter what threats, no matter what uh, situation or circumstances that come against us, we could have the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost will come to us and we can now speak God's word with boldness. <laughs> Praise the Lord. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you. May the Lord lift up his conscience. You. May the Lord give you his peace. And I commend you all to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up an inheritance to those who are sanctified in the precious name of his son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus. Amen. And not to him that is able to keep you from falling, present you for us in the presence of his glory, both glory, majesty, dominion, power, both now, forevermore. Praise the Lord. Amen. My brothers and sisters, <laughs> I would much rather preach the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The gospel of once saved, always saved. I'd rather preach it uh, uh, illiterately. I'd rather preach it uneducated. I'd rather preach it untrained. I would rather preach it that way than preach the false gospel with, you know, articulations, with comprehension, with coherency, with eloquency and with expressive fluency. I would rather not preach that false gospel that way. I would rather preach <laughs> the false gospel. No, excuse me. I would rather preach the gospel of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ any which way that I do. <laughs> God bless me. God bless me.